Welcome to the Sage 300 training video. Today's topic is Accounts Payable Invoice Entry. For this training, we are working in the Sage provided sample company. To begin, let's take a look at the invoice entry screen and its component parts. First, we navigate to Accounts Payable, AP Transactions, and Invoice Entry. We can either create a new batch using the New button or select an existing batch. Let's go ahead and explore the existing batch a little bit. We can see that the batch has a description given to it and a data was created. The number of current entries and the total dollar amount of all the entries summed together. Looking at the first entry, we see that the entry has a description entered. This is optional. The first required field is the vendor number. We can use the zoom function to look at a few of the details of the vendor. Next, we see there is a remit to location field. This allows us to issue a check to a different address different from the main vendor address. We will see an example of this shortly. We can see this transaction as an invoice. There are multiple document types in addition to an invoice, such as credit note, debit note. We have two different date fields on the screen. The first date is the document date. This is the date that controls the aging schedule of the document. The second date is the posting date. This typically defaults to the same date as the document date. However, the default can be configured to the session or batch date in the options. Primary reason for the two dates is to allow an invoice to be entered where the date from the vendor is to a closed period. The document date can be set to the date of the invoice and the posting date can be set to a more current open period. This way, the aging on the document matches what the vendor is expecting and your closed fiscal period is left unchanged. The account set is pulled from the vendor setup, but it can be changed if needed. The account set defines the AP trade account the invoice will post to. The document number is the number provided by the vendor. If no number is provided, you will need to create one. It is important to note that the document number must be unique for the vendor. This is an important control in the system to prevent duplicate transactions from being created for a vendor. When creating an invoice directly in the AP module, the PO number and order number fields are available for manual entry. These are optional and can be used as needed for your organization. They are primarily used by invoices generated in the PO module. We can see that this vendor is set to track 1099 amounts. This invoice has been set so the amount of the invoice found here in the document total is being fully assigned to the 1099 tracking encoded to the box 1 on the 1099. If no 1099 tracking is set on the vendor, these two fields will not appear. Further details on the functionality of 1099 tracking. Further details on the functionality of 1099 tracking is outside the scope of this lesson. We also have the ability to place a transaction on hold, track retainage on it, or assign the invoice to the job costing module. Details of these functions will be covered in another video. Before we go to the detailed grid below, let's review a couple of the tabs. The Taxes tab is pre-populated with sales tax information pulled from the master vendor record. We can see that this invoice is set to not track sales tax in the tax module. On the Terms tab, the Terms code is populated by the vendor master record. The due date is determined by the Terms code setting and the document date. Additionally, the Terms code will determine the discount date and amounts. If there is a variance between the calculation made by Sage 300 and information provided by the vendor, these fields can be manually changed. Moving back to the main document tab and down to the detail grid, we can see that the entire $5,000 has been allocated to one GL code, 6560, for office rent. If we move to the second entry, we can see that this entry is split between two general ledger accounts. You can allocate a document to as many GL accounts as needed. This invoice is an example of one not being 1099 tracked, as there are no 1099 fields here. On the Terms tab, we can see that this terms code is split into a multi-pay format. Sage 300 can handle a complexity of payment schemas, but they do need to be set up prior to creating an invoice for them. There is also a Totals tab, which document summarizes the document and it shows the amount 
If there are any dollar amounts not allocated to a GL line, this line would be populated. We can also see that there's no prepayment on this, but there are discounts available and our net payable amount is $615.86. Let's go ahead and see a invoice being entered in a real example here. We'll create a new entry. We'll give it a description. And we'll select our vendor, Fred's Cleaning Service. Now notice that a remit to location automatically popped in. This is because it is set up to be the default remit to location, the primary remit to location for this particular vendor. And we can see that its address at a head office in Las Vegas, Nevada, is different than the regional office in Eureka, California. So this allows the system to send the check to their main payment center in Las Vegas. We'll go ahead and set up uh, an invoice date on here. Maybe it was the last day of, of the month. Notice that when I tab through, it adjusted my posting date to the last day of the month, but I want to record that expense in this fiscal period. So I'm going to change my posting date. I'll type in a document number. Notice that this entry is set up for 1099 processing, and I'll enter a dollar amount for my invoice. And I'll go ahead and enter the same dollar amount in my 1099 field. Now this particular vendor was set to automatically begin with an office expense account because predominantly for this particular vendor, these are the nature of their expenses. We can choose to accept that and put the full dollar amount in here. Or we can put a smaller amount, use our insert key, create a new line, come over to our GL account, and use the finder. I can access the finder in a couple different ways. I can double click and grab the little finder icon from there. I can click in the navigation header title up here, or I can press F5 and display my uh, finder. And I can put in a description in here and charge this to a different GL account. And so maybe $93.26 were for some ancillary service that we want to allocate. Notice at the moment, I have an undistributed amount of $93.26, which is the amount that I'm working on. But that's because this particular line has not yet posted. And when I hit my insert key and move to the next line, my undistributed amount goes away. If I was to not fully distribute the amount of this transaction, I would get a message when I go to save the transaction warning me that this transaction was out of balance. So it is comparing the document total here to the total amount distributed both here and if there's any related taxes, those amounts are here. Now this particular vendor again is not sales tax tracked. It is a, a vendor class code of two, which in this sample company indicates that tax tracking has been turned off. So now that I've created my line item here, I can go ahead and hit add. If I want, I can review and see that my terms codes are set up. My due date is 210 net 30. So since I had a 430 uh, document date, it's given me 30 days to 530. And it's saying I can have a 2% discount if I pay by the 10th of the month. And when I'm done, I can hit add. And then I could go create another entry and another entry. There's really no limit to the number of entries that you can create in here. And then when you're all done, you can post the batch. To post the batch, I can do that in a couple different ways. I can go to an active transaction and hit the post button. And I could do that on the last one, the first one, one in the middle. That post button is always available down here. Or I can close. I can come into my transactions and into my invoice batch list. I can flag the batches ready to post and I can hit the post button. If I have multiple batches available here, if I have multiple batches set ready to post, I can use the post all button 
to post all the batches at once. So I don't have to individually post one batch at a time. I can post three, four, five different batches all at once. And when I hit the post button, it goes and posts it down to the general ledger and I'm, it gives me a message saying successfully completed and I am all done. That concludes today's lesson on Sage 300 Accounts Payable Invoice Entry. Thank you for watching this video. If this video was helpful, please like, subscribe, and share. For more information, please feel free to contact us at info at Thank you very much and have a great day.